Y'all know what it is, Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, and we're back. Black versus white. Racist white gangs. Racist black gangs. Come on now, y'all know I didn't seen it. So let's relive. All right, so let's get into it. Prison gangs. White versus black. Black versus white. Racist white gangs. Racist black gangs. Now I've told y'all before in VA, here where I live on the East Coast, it's different than a lot of states. Of course, you've got your racist gangs. And people can dispute. You can argue what I'm about to say. That's not what I'm here for. I'm just giving you my experience, what I saw. At the time that I was in prison, the, the biggest racist white gang we had was the Aryan Brotherhood. Now, people say, oh, they're not racist. They just believe in it being just white people with white people. Y'all can say that, but as a white man or someone that's considered to be a white man, I saw a lot more behind the scenes than other races would or people like to admit. And I heard things, overheard things that I just didn't agree with. And that's why I put that organization in the category of being a racist organization. You might be a part of it somewhere else and that might not be the case, but keep in mind, I wasn't there with you. I don't know how y'all rock there. I'm telling y'all what happens here, right? I didn't really think that there were racist black gangs. I know racism exists in all cultures. Racism exists with all races. That's a no brainer. As long as there's stupidity in the world or, you know, people that want to point the finger and blame a whole entire group, there's going to be racism. I was a dude in prison that kicked it with everybody. If you didn't have no messed up charges. You were a good person. You know, somebody I rocked with, then I would kick it with you. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. So I dealt with white dudes, black dudes, you know, Spanish dudes of all different descents. Just, I was, I was very diverse when it came to the crowd of people I had around me or I spoke to on a day-to-day -day basis. I talked about this tall black guy named Shakur that got into it with the MS-13s. They chased him with the knives and stuff, right? Well, Shakur was a, a five percenter. For y'all that don't know, five percenters fall under the nation of Islam, but they don't fully proclaim everything that all the other you know, Muslims and stuff claim. They believe that, you know, 85% of the world is lost or kind of ignorant. 10% can be saved. And they are the 5% that really knows the truth, that have been enlightened, that understand their purpose, and so on and so on. That breaks down who the 5%ers are. I'd never met a 5%er that was not black. They were always black dudes that were 5%ers, right? So I would kick it with Shakur. I would kick it with, you know, different dudes. My homeboy Shabazz. And these dudes are five percenters. Shakur, I told you, was a New York cat. He had come down. The whole five percenter religion, you know, started, I believe. Don't quote me. I think it started in Harlem up in New York. And these are just dudes I talked to. Dudes I did business with. You know, we'd sit and chop it up sometimes. You might see me. Sitting and eating with one of them. You might see me sitting them all with a Spanish dude. No big deal. But then you've got your Aryans. Your Aryan Brotherhood, which consists of all white guys. And they more or less were just a, a racist organization. That's what they were. I call it like I see it. When I first showed up. Now, let me rephrase that. When they first showed up. Because I had been in prison a while and I had ran across none of them. Next thing I know, a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff jumps off on the yard. People get transferred. People get sent from my side of the yard to the other side of the compound to another side of the yard. And they're sending guys from over there, over here. We get a bunch of these Aryan dudes, these AB dudes show up in my pod, in my building, on our side of the you know compound. And they jump right into recruiting dudes right into it 
their numbers are starting to grow. There's more and more of them everywhere you look. You see them walking. You see their tattoos. You know, you see the shamrocks. And this is just certain things that, you know, distinguish who they are. They come to me one day. They've been in the pod around me now for a while. And they come to me and they're like, hey, what's up, man? You ain't never thought about getting down. And I'm like, when you say getting down, what do you mean? They're like, you ain't never thought about, you know, becoming AB or joining the AB. And I'm like, nah, why would I? They're like, well, you're a white man. You know, it's not a bad idea to possibly think about what we're talking about. I said, well, first of all, I'm not even, I'm of mixed descent. I'm Indian and Irish. Like, I, this shit don't even make sense. I'm not even, like, if you want to be white, white, like, I say you got to be, like, super white. I'm not super white. I'm I'm half Indian. Oh shit! Oh shit! Well, your offer still stands. They still tried to bring me into this just because of the tone of my skin, right? I shoot it down. I wouldn't really rock with many of these dudes, man. You know, I try to keep it peaceful and respectful. What's up? I keep it moving. But you're not gonna see me sitting at a table with a bunch of AB dudes. You're not gonna see me walking the yard with a bunch of AB dudes. Or mealing up or doing any of these things that they do together. Because like I've told you, in prison, you are who you hang around. So if I put myself around them, everybody automatically assumes that I'm with them. Well, I was under the impression with the five percenters because of what? Because of ignorance, because of not knowing. I had heard so many other people say they don't like white people. They don't. I said, man, I got 5% of homeboys. They're like, I'm telling you, they don't really like white people, man. They, they mess with you for some reason. But in general, they don't like white people. Like, you know, the leader that started the 5% is fell into Malcolm X. And, you know, it's just part of their thing that they don't like white people. I, I didn't believe that. And I still don't believe that. I believe that there are people that don't like other races, but they fall in all categories. So I'm kicking it with, you know, Shakur and Shabazz one day. We're sitting out at the table. We decided to make something to eat that night. They asked me, came to my cell, like, Jay, you trying to throw up on this meal? We short a couple items. You trying to get down? And I was like, hell yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get down. You know what I mean? So we meal up. And the next day, one of the dudes comes to me. One of the AB dudes tells me, yo, that's not a good look, man, for you. I said, what you mean it's not a good look for me? He was like, you out there with the, the five percenters and shit, you know, you know mealing up it just makes you know white dudes look bad i said it makes white dudes look bad first of all i'm not with y'all so i can't make y'all look anything this is what i do and this is how it's been since i've been here like y'all showed up over here now y'all want to start trying to like put this wall up and divide people and i'm not with that man i rock with who i rock with you know what i mean and i i told you i said there's a problem let me know like we're not gonna go back on this we're not gonna go back and forth we're not gonna discuss this every time we see each other I'm Jay, you're you, you do you, I do me. That's how it's going to go. And these dudes ain't going to try to crash with me because I got numbers. I got dudes that really legitly in there fuck with me that if y'all want to come at me because of who I kick it with and what I do, y'all are going to lose miserably. You know what I mean? I got some of these old heads from Richmond and some of these young boys from Richmond and dudes from different areas that are sure enough hitters that will take you up out of here if that's where y'all want to take it. So they fall back from it, right? So I'm talking to, to my homeboy Shakur, and I'm like, yo, dude feels the type of way that I even talk to y'all. He's like, why, what's up with that, God? He call everybody God. What's up, God? What you mean by that? I said, uh, they feels the type of way. Like, they, everybody talking about y'all hate white people. And he was like, that's, that's some truth to that. There's some 5% that do not like, you know, white people. He's like, there's some truth to that. He was like, but I'm not one of those people, man. I don't follow that aspect of anything. He felt the same way I felt. If you're good people, I'm going to rock with you. He was like, it's them AB dudes talking shit, ain't it? I said, look, man, you know I'm not the one to do all that he says, she says shit. I mean, you can think what you want, man, but I'm not I'm not trying to stir no shit up. I'm not going to stir no shit up. Y'all good dudes. I don't want to see nobody get jammed up. I'm just telling y'all that it's dudes that feel some type of way, man. He's like, that's what it is. So from there on out, Shakur is kind of... I'm not going to say looking for trouble, but he's looking for little reasons to spark one of their asses. He's looking for the first sign of anything to take off on one of them, right? The AB dudes are on the yard one day, and they're having a meeting out there. And there must be probably about 15 of them. 
And we're on seven building yard all the way down at the end, you know, right towards where they do the death penalty and the, all that stuff at. They're, they're down at the end doing their thing. And there's a bunch of five percenters walking laps together, right? Well, it's a softball season. We're out there playing softball. I'm out in the, in the outfield. You know, I think I was playing center. And we're just, you know, having our softball game, enjoying the summertime, some of the good things about prison, you know, releasing some stress. And I look over and all I see is the five percenters are rumbling these A-B dudes. And there's way more of the A-B dudes than there is the five percenters because they didn't come out there looking for no wreck. These dudes are actually having a meeting, so they have the, the, the larger amount of their numbers with them at the time. And all this chaos erupts, and I look over, and Shakur, Shabazz, all these different dudes are just over there. Boom, 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 boom. They're rumbling. And a couple of these AB boys, they're big, jacked up, you know, meathead white dudes. They're giving it back. They're fighting. Now, you got some of the white AB dudes that have taken off, that have gotten away from it, and have just, like, went in different directions, like, didn't know what to do, because they were really never about that type of life, right? All of us on the softball field, the ones that aren't involved, we fall back. And then a bunch more dudes, you know, uh, five percenters and Muslim guys take off in that direction. They jump in and they just completely smash these A-B dudes out, all the way out, smashed them. They had these dudes running, stomping them, kicking them. They beat the shit out of these dudes, right? By the time the, the tower sees what's going on, everybody disperses. They break off in singles. And then they, you know, walk through groups and mix and match until you can't tell who's who no more. You can't pick out really anybody except the majority of the A-B dudes that were involved because a lot of them got their heads shaved. A lot of them got tattoos on their heads, on their faces. So the lady in the guard, the guard tower was uh, able to pick out a bunch of these dudes. We go back in the building. We go on lock. And they're yelling from cell to cell, the five percenters are, about what happened. And what happened is as they were walking by the ABs, the AB dudes didn't say anything to them directly. But during them talking, one of the dudes spoke up something along the lines of, we got to do something to get these in control around here. And he dropped the N-bomb. Shakur heard him say it, turned around and said, what'd you say? And dude told him, you know, pretty much this ain't got nothing to do with you. Mind your business. Fuck out of here. Keep walking. She was like, nah, say it again. Say it again. Say what you just said again so my brothers can hear what you just said. And dude wouldn't say it. He done said some racist shit. They're not having it. They know now where they stand. They run over there and just boom, 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 boom. Go to fighting, right? A lot of the AB dudes didn't get locked up. You know what I mean? I told you it's only like 15. I think they locked up like six or seven of them. We go on lock. And in the meantime... More dudes are coming in the pod while we're on lockdown, coming from other institutions, other parts of the prison. We get a couple more of these AV dudes into the pod, right? And Shakur is letting it be known. He's yelling from his door. He's like, look, we're very peaceful. And that's when dude yells up, y'all, it's just as y'all racist just like we are. Y'all don't like us. We don't like y'all. That's what it is. Shakur said, I never said I didn't like none of y'all. I ain't never came with you sideways. You ain't never heard me say a racist word out, out my mouth. And you thinking you're going to do it. Y'all got me fucked all the way up. We will smash y'all every time these doors pop and start killing y'all until y'all go on somewhere with that bullshit, right? So while they're in the cell, we're on, we're on lockdown for a better part of a week while they're investigating what happened. You got investigators coming in, prison administration coming in, the warden, assistant warden. They're walking around asking people. They get to my cell, ask me if I know anything about the yard or what happened in the yard? I said, nah, I wasn't even over there, on that area, man. I said, I was on the other side of the building where the blacktop is. What have you heard? I didn't hear nothing, man. I, I don't know what's going on. I knew the whole thing, but I'm not about to tell y'all nothing. You know what I mean? Do your job. They asked my celly. He gives them the same thing. My celly tells them, I don't know, man. I was in the building that day. I don't even know why we on lock. I don't know nothing. Ain't nobody telling the police nothing. We don't, you know, we don't fuck with the law in there. Everything goes back to normal. Everything quiets down. The beef in between them comes to a halt. Couple months go by, and we got this new dude in the pod named Little Joe. Little Joe was doing like 15 or 16 years, one of those two numbers, 
for a bunch of drug charges, gun charges. It was mostly guns is what he was doing time for. A small dude. Joe comes in. He really don't know nobody. Like most people that come into a new pod or on a new compound. He's trying to find out where he fits in. Younger guy. You already know. The AB dudes swoop in, dig their claws in him. And they start trying to teach him and school him to their bullshit. Joe goes and gets his tattoo on him. That represents the AB for everybody to see. Now the dudes that were kicking it with little Joe that weren't AB affiliated have fallen back from him. So now all he's got is a circle of these, these Aryan dudes, right? And like I said, for the most part, everything went back to normal. We went back to our normal living conditions. The beef was died down. These two groups of dudes just avoided each other as much as they could. You know, I don't like they would do things like stare over each other's direction. But when somebody would look, they turn their heads and look the other way. They start using little Joe and I liked little Joe. Joe was a good dude. When I say I liked him, like he was actually a good person, but easily influenced. Joe's wife would come up there every weekend and little Joe was exactly what his name described him as. He was a little dude. Joe was maybe five, four. 140, 145 pounds, short, small dude. His wife is 5'10", 5'11". She's a big block, diesel. I'm talking like big woman, you know what I mean? Like she could probably beat up four little Joes if she wanted to. It was just a weird combination of seeing the two of them together. But this girl loved Joe. She was always there every weekend. The Aryan dudes would continue to hold their, their meetings on the yard on the weekends like they had done when the fight popped off. And Joe would get called for a visit. They Joe missed three or four meetings on the yard, so they come to Joe and they tell him, it's mandatory you're at these meetings. Most of these dudes aren't getting visits. They're just looking for somebody to pick on. You have to be at these meetings. I don't care if you get called for a visit. You deny it, you better be on the yard for the next meeting. Joe tells him, yo, if my wife comes to see me, I'm going to see my wife. She comes up here with my kids, I'm going to see my kids. I'm not bucking that or turning that down to come out on the yard. It ain't no disrespect, but that's my wife and my kids. You better be on that yard next meeting. You better turn that visit down. No matter what, you better be out there when we're out there to discuss what we got to discuss. That weekend comes around before Rec gets called. After, after We had lunchtime. After lunch, we had Rec, morning Rec, and then at this point in time, we had night Rec. It's summertime. They call Joe for a visit. They Right before child, before they call child, they call lockdown, and they call his name Joe, such and such. After count, you have a visit. I see Joe get his stuff. You know, he goes out to the ironing board and gets his clothes ready. After count, they count, count clears. Guys are on standby to go to the chow hall and eat. Joe goes out with movement and goes over to the visiting room. The dudes are out on the yard. I'm out there that day. Uh, I believe it was summertime, blistering hot, dusty ass, dirty track. I'm walking this dusty ass, dirty track with my homeboys, just talking bullshit, you know, just doing what you would expect to do in prison. And I see all these dudes and their numbers have now grown more than what they had before. And they're down there at the same place. They got the fight net and they're having their meeting. Little Joe's not there. He's over there with his wife, right? Joe would come back, and that evening, I can't remember if I was tattooing. Yeah, I was tattooing, because I didn't go to Night Wreck that night. After we came out at 5 o'clock count, you know, after that, they say, stand by for wreck, and then, you know, you wait. They pop the door, you go out the door, you go to the wreck yard, get your two hours of wreck, come back in, you know, around 8-something. They pop the, the cell doors, and we're on stand by for wreck. Dude comes down to my cell. I set up to start tattooing on him. And I hear all this commotion and all this chaos, right? I kind of, not being nosy, but just trying to be alert and aware. You know what I mean? Staying on guard. I need to know what's going on around me before I get started. Like, if somebody gets stabbed, or we about to go on lock. You know, I need to know what's happening before I shut the cell door, lock this dude in here and start tattooing on him. I look, all the commotion is coming from Joe, Joe's cell. These dudes are in there so deep. And you got dudes blocking the door so you can't see that you can't really tell who's even in there. It's just a herd of guys in the cell beating little Joe up, smashing Joe, stomping Joe, kicking Joe, right? So this happens, takes place for a couple of minutes, and they come on out the cell. And a short time later, 
you know, dudes have been going down there to check on Joe and see what's going on with it. But like I said, since he became AB, it's kind of off limits. Like you got yourself in a situation, can't nobody mess with you. This is when I realized you don't always listen to the hype. Don't believe the stereotypes. People tried to put them bad bones on the five percenters. Say the five percenters were racist. The five percenters were, were this, were that. The main AB dude that had them jump Joe wanted their tattoo off Joe because that's common with any type of gang. If you're not in a gang no more, the tattoo's got to go. It can be cut off, burned off, covered up. We don't care. We want to go. They're putting pressure on Joe about this tattoo in front of everybody. Carrying him, calling him names. He's all busted up, beat up. Eyes are swole up. He's sitting in a celly, you know, up front to get hot water. And he can't even really come out to the cell. These dudes are going to the cell just messing with Joe, still talking shit. Tell me why the 5% of dudes went down to Joe's cell and checked on him. I'm not sure of what the conversation consisted of. But whatever it was, when they were done, they came back from Joe's cell, stood in the middle of the pod, and told them dudes, if anybody so much as lays another finger on this young man or does anything else to him, you will not only deal with the five percenters, you'll deal with the Muslims and all of our brothers and we will wipe you out. First and only warning. He will cover the tattoo up when he wants to cover it up. It's garbage anyway. He'll get to it when he gets to it. But if anybody else tries to attack this man, Y'all have to go through us. Now you're talking, there's a whole lot of these dudes standing there with their arms crossed in front of this little scared white dude's cell that wasn't long ago as part of a racist white gang. I guess in them talking to him, they realized that Joe was lost and was just looking for somebody to love him and somewhere to fit in. That was the end of that. I seen the Aryan dudes all the way up you know, until I went home, I'm not going to say they were all bad dudes. I can't say that because I can't judge a man on strictly parts of his beliefs. But they were never the dudes that I rocked with. They were never the dudes that I flocked with. I can't say that they were all racist. I can say that some of them were absolutely racist. I can't say all of them. But what I want y'all to get from this is you don't judge a book by its cover. With the five percenters, dudes that tried to convince me that these guys were all about just black guys. They didn't like white guys. And getting to know some of these guys I've told you about, I found that out not to be true. And dudes try to chalk it up to, well, it's because you're not like the average white dude. It's because you're a city dude. They relate to you. You act black or whatever you want to, whatever bullshit you want to pull out your ass as to why somebody would gravitate towards me or like me, right? To this day, I can't really wrap my mind around why they went to bat for Lil' Joe like that other than the fact that I guess they didn't like them guys and they thought they were bullies and they weren't going to have it. But I had nothing but the utmost respect for them, man, and what they stood for. You're going to meet guys along your way in prison that are going to be hard to read, that you're going to hear things about, and it's not always going to be true. You've got to learn to judge people based off of their actions, based off of you guys' interactions and what you know to be true and not what the next man says. I know in some states it's mandatory that the whites go with the whites and the blacks go with the blacks, that y'all don't intertwine. I'm glad that it's not like that here in VA. I'm glad that you're able to go in and be who you are whether that's going to help you or hurt you, you don't have to go in and be someone you're not to make other people happy. But yeah, that's it. Whites versus blacks, 5 percenters versus ABs. But anyways, these penitentiaries, institutions, detention centers, prisons, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And like always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.